everybody. Welcome back to Arise and Shine. Um, this is our second video for 2021, and we've been talking about kingdom living. And last week we talked to Pastor Rick about what kingdom living is. So we have Pastor Dave with us here today to answer some questions for us, because the girls' study is going to be about the Lord God, our heart's desire. And um, since we're talking about kingdom living, kingdoms have kings and kingdoms have rulers. So we all know as Christians that the ruler of um, the kingdom that we're talking about is God himself. So in order to fall in love with our God, um, we're just kind of trying to figure out, you know, some of his character traits, which we know we could look into the Bible, but if we could get some help here on... Um, on what you have to say about some traits of God. Thank you, Sandy. We, um, like Sandy just spoke about kings and kingdoms, every kingdom has a king, and so does the kingdom of heaven. And the best form of government, naturally, is, is a benevolent dictator. And what we have is a God who is not just all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present, which is the thing we know most about our God. The thing about knowing our God is not just who he is, but what he is. And that's, to me, as important as knowing God. We have a God in, in his times and places that we live in where hope is, is hard to find. But when we understand that we have a God who is loving, we have a God who is faithful. We have a God who forgives. We have a God who, like we saw last Sunday in, in the preaching, we have a God who, no matter what situation we're in, he gives us the strength and the ability to have new new mercies and new strengths and new hopes and new outside insights and all these things every day. And we have, he's a king who holds nothing back. Most kings, earthly kings, what they do is they want to extract things from you. And what that makes you is more or less a servant. It makes you more or less a subject of that kingdom. The God that we serve is so giving, right, that we are a citizen of his kingdom. Right. And that's huge. And sons and daughters, too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Sons and daughters... And in the natural, most people weren't sons and daughters of the king. But spiritually, any time you come to know who Jesus is, you do become a son and daughter of Christ. And that is the largest thing, that's the biggest thing that can happen in any person's life. To go, and in, in, in that part of sin, we're subjects to sin. But after we let Christ come in, we accept his kingdom into our life we now become citizens of that king. Last week, um, I talked to Pastor Rick, and we were talking about uh, God being a, a, a holy king, obviously. And, um, you know, well, so earthly kings here, we can think of like an earthly king. I mean, they have that side of them that, that's like, I don't want to say, kings here, nation, kings of the nations, because we have a fallen sin nature, we're talking about wickedness too. That that sin nature has that side of it. Those kings can have that wicked side. So our king in heaven, though, does not have that side. No, correct. He, no, he doesn't have a wicked side. But see, part of understanding the the God that we serve is understanding his traits. And once we understand that, our our response to our king and his response to us is totally solely based on our obedience to that king. Blessings come from obedience, but we also have a God who is an exacting God. He tells us in scripture what he expects from us. And we can't expect to live a life that we want to, of opposite and opposed to what he wants from us and expect things to go well. The book of Galatians says that our God will not be mocked. If we, if we live according to the flesh, we will reap the things of the flesh. 
But if we live by the Spirit of God, then we will reap the things that the Spirit brings. Okay. So if you had to put some of God's traits into one word, mm -hmm. I know you gave me some watchful, caring, providing. What? How, how would you sum up traits of our God? It's interesting. The, the traits of our God are almost innumerable because the traits of our God are going to be able to fit any situation in our life. Ephesians says he's our peace. Hebrews says that he will never leave us or forsake us. He's a trusting God, and that's what we're going to get to. See, the God that we serve, any God, if, if we see the traits of someone, what we have to do is then spend time with that God, with that person. The more time I spend with a person, the more the traits of that person ingrain themselves in my life. They become a part of who I am. And when that happens, when I spent, Scripture says that I'm supposed to rise early in the morning and read Scripture and pray and get to know and under, grab these traits in my life, right? And then once I do that, Scripture says if I diligently seek God, diligence is a trait in my life, but that diligence will bring me closer to the God that I serve. Because he says if I diligently seek him, I will find. So, um, on trust, you also brought the word trust up when we yes. were speaking earlier about. So, how does all this tie into traits, time, and, and now trust. finally trust? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. As as human beings, which we are, our sins have been forgiven, and as as this Bible study goes out, as a rise and shine goes out, if whoever listens, just let you, if you don't know the Lord, come to know the Lord. It'll be the best decision you make. But what happens in the trust, the more I come to know you, or the more I come to know Gabriel and his traits, the more time I spend with either one of you, and I see that the traits are steadfast. They're not wavering. They are the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. His traits never change. And the more I know someone like that, right, the more I see there's no changing. The book of James says there's no changing of our God. There's no, it's not like the, the shifting sand that goes out around. There's no change in our God. The more I see that, the more I can trust him. His trust never changed. His traits never changed. I can put everything I have, every ounce of trust that I have, I can put into him. And I know that he will be faithful trustworthy enough to keep me safe in all situations. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our question and answer about the traits of our God. And um, so we'll see you all um, at our study and you can go to the website um, like you normally would at occc.church and you can find the Arise and Shine link. Uh, go down to the flashing boxes, and there'll be an Arise and Shine link. Click on that, and then you can download a study, and you can do that before we actually meet in class. You can check the website out for when the next actual live class will be, and then we'll talk about those questions. And, um, but this is our topic tonight. Um, it's the character traits of our God, and the um, title of our actual study is gonna be The Lord God, Our Heart's Desire. So thank you very much for watching this, and we hope that you learned a little something, and we'll see you.